go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing red and white striped trunks, and hailing from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at that junior lightweight limit of 130 pounds even, with a record of 45 wins, five losses. He has 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the former and two-time IBF junior lightweight world champion and tonight's challenger, please welcome Juan John John Molina. opponent across the ring presenting the defending champion on my left fighting out of the red corner wearing white red and green trunks fighting out of la colonia boxing club as the pride of oxnard california he weighed in at a ready 129 and one half pounds undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 31 wins no losses 24 wins coming by way of knockout tonight he is making the second defense of his title here is the defending and undefeated ibf junior lightweight champion of the world introducing roberto grandpa garcia Once again, the referee in charge, Mitch Halpern, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. All right, let's keep this fight clean. Protect yourself at all times and pay my commands at all times. Okay, pay attention. Any questions? Right, touch gloves, good luck. Mitch Halpern will ref Tyson Holyfield, one in 96. We take a look at uh, Garcia. Very patient, smart, tries to figure out his opponent in no particular hurry, in sharp contrast. John John Molina, well, he fights at a very energetic pace. He's gutsy. Both fighters here are very game, but the big difference, what does Molina, who hasn't fought in over a year, as we mentioned, what does this guy have left in the tank? One of the uh, first things you notice, though, about uh, Molina, although he is a lightweight, he's got the legs of a middleweight, very thick, could be very tough to get this guy off his feet. Molina's a real competitor. He's going to come here to win this fight. Yeah, he, he, John John, there's one thing about John John, he fights every fight. He's been slowing down, but he fights. Another thing you notice here, Molina keeps his left hand down quite low. It's an inviting target. We'll see if Garcia can take advantage. He can't be too anxious. I'm sure he sees that it's right out in front of him. But that's generally not his style over anxiousness. Garcia, a very gritty, resilient fighter. Smart. Let him up. Let him up. Don't punch. Don't punch. Don't punch. Right, just... Excuse me, Steve. I saw tapes of Garcia when he fought uh, Ladone. And I'll tell you what. He really has good power, good patience, gets off the floor. He makes tremendous adjustments within one minute in that round. Just about to say, he told us he just wasn't focused the first two rounds. He'd been out of the ring close to eight months with promotional problems, but then he listened to his corner between rounds, made the proper adjustments, and came back to win with quite a barrage against the Cuban Ledone. Now, that was uh, a, a brilliant fight on his part because it looked like he didn't have a chance in, in the world to come back, and he did. He came back and knocked out Ladone. It was a, 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 a terrific. Molina has won 24 of his last 26. The two losses to De La Hoya and Mosley. He fights with pride and passion. Always ready. The good losses, energy level. Two losses that are not the shabby names. Yeah. Big and, time names. And very courageous against Mosley. And some people much, thought he beat De La Hoya. Well, right here, he's doing all the fighting. I mean, he's doing all the, the punching. I mean, nothing's happening, but he's doing it all. Well, he's got experience, smarts, power, Molina. Wearing the uh, colors of Puerto Rico on his trunks. Very unorthodox. He'll wrestle you, grab you, headbutt you. Just what he did against uh, De La Hoya. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. I guess the best strategy is to wrestle back. Don't look for help from the referee. He's just not an easy guy to fight. No matter how old he is. Right now, I think that the experience factor that Molina has is, is kind of a little telling. He's a little more comfortable in there. It's a, you know, it's a high 
stakes type of fight with a world title on the line. Garcia, the younger guy, even though he's the champion, doesn't have the experience. I'm going to be very curious to see how Garcia comes out in the second round. Garcia yeah. sort of an old 23. He started boxing, he told me, when he was five, and he got the moniker Grandpa, and it just stuck. Yeah. He has a couple of kids. I wonder if he can find an opponent at five. Yeah. <laughs> Who would you find? Somebody preferably very short. Yeah. I tell you what, the two or three punches that Garcia threw to the body were very hard punches. I mean, he, he, he sat down on the punch and really punched hard. But he's been punched. I punched three or four or five to one by Molina. Molina also losing to Lupe Suarez and twice to Tony the Tiger Lopez. He says, you're taking too many punches. He's just getting the water prepared for him. He's not saying anything. Nothing going on in that corner. Apparently, they're satisfied. They love it, they love it. It was very good, you won the round. Everybody seems satisfied in that corner. So two corners that are very satisfied how the first round went by. But I gave it to John John Molina. Well, Molina was the aggressive pursuer in round one. Not that many punches connected. Molina still outworked him and outlanded, and it's just that simple. Exactly, as we enter into round two. Now, as mentioned, Garcia, a very smart, patient guy. He waits for the opening, but is he being a little too patient here? Right now, I think, Steve, part of the problem is he's trying to lead with big shots and big counters, and he's not setting anything up with a jab. He's, it seems a little tight. Well, I've seen him uh, on a couple of occasions. Sometimes he just lays back, waits for the right moment, as he did in his last fight. He got off to that slow start. And things beginning to open up here a little bit. Good right cross by uh, Garcia. He landed a real good left hook in the counter right hand. Molina missed four or five consecutive recounters, and uh, he seems to be finding the range a little more this round, Garcia. And much harder, and much harder. It looks like he's going for a knockout early. He looks like you know, what he puts in is really hard punching, whereas John John puts in those searching punches looking for somebody, but not hard. Garcia, realizing the importance of this fight, knows that everyone knows the name John John Molina. He says at the end of this uh, fight, they'll know the name Roberto Garcia. Good action fighting right in the middle of the ring. Good. One. They are bumping heads. Neither man wanting to take a step back, both of them winging away from where they're at. But the harder punches are coming from Garcia. Molina, the busier of the two, but uh, Garcia, economical, and those punches landing. Beautiful left hooks, doubling up by Garcia. Another left hook by Garcia, landing to the chin of Molina. Garcia said in the meetings, too, that he admires Molina very much and thinks he's by far the best that he's faced. He's very classy and, and respectful. Uh, Garcia, Garcia, discipline. And Molina, also a very uh, classy uh, guy, good family man. That right uppercut just missed by uh, Garcia. Garcia is keeping a pretty tight defense, too. He doesn't want to let any of those wild shots come through. So he's, get, he's got heavy hands. He does load up from time to time. Garcia knows the importance of this fight. He also knows how dangerous this game is. Therefore, he wants to get out in a few years and wants to uh, become a police officer. He goes from one uh, danger spot to another. Say, oh, am I glad he, he picked a safe profession to get out of after he leaves Instead the ring? He's getting punched at. He wants to get shot at. <laughs> sure. Whoa. Fighter's logic, who could tell? He's a brave kid. Yeah. Oh, a low blow there by Garcia. It didn't seem to affect John John. John John, much more serious in answer to Bobby's question. What's he going to do in the second round? He came out and punched very hard in the second round. That's what he's going to do. He came out and punched. Well, coming up next, the main event, Tyson Botha into the dressing room of Francois Botha. He said he closely studied the tapes of Holyfield Tyson, will look to emulate Holyfield's strategy, saying the key to beating Tyson is to stand up to his 
bully tactics. Said that Tyson can't fight going backwards to tie him up. He has to counter punch instead of backpedaling to the rope. You got to hit Tyson and not stand directly in front of him or close in. He feels a major advantage is that he's been active all year as opposed to Tyson, who says he says hasn't been training all year because he's been in court getting his license back. But keep in mind, while Tyson's been inactive, both has fought only two rounds in the last year coming off a pair of first round knockouts. Tyson both up next here at the MGM Grand Garden. The arena is uh, is filling up. The fans are settling in as they watch this prelim, but uh, they are here specifically to see Tyson in his return. Prelim, but championship match. Yeah, this is for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship. We headed to round three. I never thought I'd see the day when preliminaries would comprise of nothing but championship fights. That's depressing. Well, it seems like almost every fight is yeah. a championship fight these days. Uh, well, this is good quality. Good yeah, this quality is good here. quality. But a lot of them are diluted. Yeah, but this is good. <laughs> In the first round, Molina came out. I thought he won the round. Garcia went back and made some adjustments. I thought he stuck, snuck out the second round. Now, Molina has made a statement in the, in the uh, dress rooms and with the meetings that no matter what Garcia does, he can adjust and do what it takes to win. Now let's see what adjustments he's made for the third round. Well, quite a fast pace the first two minutes of the previous round in front of a, an appreciative crowd here at the MGM Grand. Garcia looking to land with that short, crisp left hook. And at the same token, protecting himself, he's got a pretty good defense. He keeps his gloves up tight up against his face. He's not getting hit by much. Now he can take a punch, and he's not that easy to hit. In great shape. Solid, tough, gutsy fighter, Garcia, in the white trunks with the red and green trim. He's from uh, Oxnard, California, the home of Fernando Vargas. Molina out of Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Well, I haven't seen him throw his uppercut yet. They say he's got a hard uppercut, but he hadn't thrown it in two, in two uh, uh, rounds. And it, there went. <laughs> I just said uh, Molina spent it. a lot of the early part of the round going to the body, coming back to the body, maybe trying to take some of the extra strength out of Garcia's upper body. Oh. He's got a sneaky uppercut. People say take your head off, so let's see what happens. Garcia is starting to tee off more here, but again, Molina just stands right in. There's a good left hook by Garcia to the chin of Molina. Molina comes back with a combination, but not much damage. I was trying to show more spirit, you know. Oh, nice punch by Molina. Here's that left hook again by Garcia that pushes Molina back. Boy, he left hook and right hand. Molina ducked a little too low and looked like he was staggered. I don't think that was the case. Yeah, it looked like he was uh, buckling there for a second, but he went down awfully low, really bent the knee. Oh, blood. Blood on the, uh, on the right brow of Garcia. Yes. But a left hook off the head of Molina by Garcia, undaunted by the blood. As Mitch Halpern takes a good close look at it. Oh, nice shots. Not sure if it was from a clash of heads or a shot by Molina. Look at this furious exchange. But it's, oh, Garcia, Garcia, really let it fly. I'll tell you what, Garcia landed some good, clean shots. Molina's chin is still there. Wow, that was hard punching by Molina. He must have felt the blood because he's come on to finish this thing. But Molina's still here. Good, good action. Excellent action. He's in the outside, it's not, it's not, it's not on the inside of the eyes, no problem. It's on the outside of his brow. Doctor, take a look. He just said, don't lose your head. Don't you, the cut's nothing, don't lose your head. Meaning that, that punch out that he had in the middle of the ring there. Chuck Bodick, the man with all the crazy head, head dudes and uh, head uh, space for rent for advertising. He's taking care of the cuts and he's very good at it. Been at it for a century or so. Maybe two centuries. Well, Roberto Garcia connected with the best punches in round three, but he is the one with the cut by his right eye. What do you think? Is that the the kind of cut that blood would come into the eye or outside? No, no, no outside. No problem. No problema. 
you might see a lot of blood, but it won't be a problem to stop the fight. You won't stop it off now. On the other hand, the, the big punches were taken by Molina. Well, to see how long this old guy can take these punches. Molina right now seems to be wanting to keep a quicker pace than does Garcia, who's the bigger puncher. He wants to take his time setting his punches. Molina, to a great degree, is not letting him. Well, maybe Molina knows something we don't know that he can't go into those late rounds and have any pep left, and he wants to finish it now or, or establish a lead now, which he has not done. Uh, Garcia with the blood uh, streaking down the outer portion of the right eye. It does not seem to be uh, hindering him. Ooh, low blow there by Molina. And a good hook by Molina. And an uppercut by Molina. Yeah, nice counter exchange. combination. Right uppercut and left hook by Garcia. Molina, though, he just keeps coming. He's one of those guys that will just keep jumping back in your face. Sometimes annoying, sometimes also very effective. And he doesn't care because he can take a punch as well. He just won't go easily. He'll stand right in there and slug it out. Loves those street brawls. Well, he's one of those guys who will never go gently through that good night. Not Molina. He has been down but never knocked out. Had a few cuts himself. Knocked down by Shane Mosey at the end of round seven. Left jab caught Molina coming in. Molina disputed it. Boy, he sure is tough. Garcia just loading up with that half hook, half uppercut with the left. Combination to the head by a Garcia countering right hook by Molina. With the nearly clashed heads there. Both front right hands almost banged head to head. Snappy right, straight right by Garcia to the face of Molina. He's going to have to have more power behind those punches to nail Molina. It's going to take a lot. But Molina's not working to me. He's getting hammered, but he's getting, he is working really hard. And as Bobby pointed out, I don't know what it is. These early rounds, he's going very fast. I mean, he's working very fast. He may be winning those judges over. Yeah, he may, he may well be because he's working so hard. Of course, he's getting hammered while he's doing all that work. Nice double left hook by Garcia and lands. Garcia still kind of intent on working that body of Garcia. Now Garcia going upstairs in the final seconds of round four. Left uppercut by Garcia. Garcia pushing Molina back, but just for a second with a straight right hand. This Molina won't budge. I hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. it. Hold 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 Let's take a look at that very, very slowly. You might see where this thing took place. Oh, it's hard to it look looked like there was a little grazing of his head to his eye there. Not much. Let's see. They spin around now and. Yeah. It might be a, a could, trick. Could have been that good left hook. There was some no blood coming out of the nose of Garcia in the corner, too. They told him in the previous round not to blow his nose, and sometimes that's an indication that you think it's broken. Yeah, that's... Oh, it's a straight right hand by Roberto Garcia, followed up by a left hook to the neck. But Molina just stands right in there and tries to answer back. But, oh, Garcia getting busy. Look at these shots to the ribs. He's starting to miss some of those big ones, too, and that can become very... Oh, he missed with that one. Right hand. A right hook by Roberto Garcia. Made a right enemy right there. What a nice right hand. Amazing chin and guts by Molina. Wow, he stands there and takes what are bombs. They would have knocked anybody out. Wow, what a combination of punches. And punches being blocked nicely by Garcia. Well, that's got to take some steam out of Molina. That last flurry by Roberto Garcia. 
Well, it's the accumulation of punches that should take the steam out of him. He's not. He's not have. He looks like he's arm weary. He looks like he's throwing spaghetti punches. He's got nothing on those punches. He's trying to still work the body a little more than I would have thought. He sees something or thinks something about Garcia's body that maybe we don't know. Again, Molina very busy, but not much is getting through. Garcia very economical, and his punches are connected, and they're powerful. There's a good straight right hand that got between the gloves of Garcia by Molina. Their first clean landed combination in a very, very long time. But back comes Garcia with a gorgeous right. And that nailed the left jaw of Molina. Molina missing that one as he stepped back. You can see when Garcia throws that right hand, he hangs it out there. He throws it. Yeah, and usually sets it up with a good left hook. And you can see it in his eyes when he's going to throw it. Again, with a, with a warning for the hit. Molina there being the ultimate gentleman. Garcia, such a, an intelligent fighter, always comes in with a game plan. Got off to a bit of a rugged start, but he has come back strong here. Still that blood, the cuts opened up around the right eye of Garcia. The blood streaking down again. The cut was open at the two-minute mark of round three. Molina considerably slowed over the last two rounds and punching very weakly. A belting overhand right by Garcia comes back with a straight right. Now a combination that backs up the head of Molina. What a vicious blow by Garcia, I'll but Molina you, is amazing. He hurt Molina. Molina refuses to back off. Just keeps coming forward as if it's nothing. Keep it out. What up? What is he talking about? Another big round for Roberto Garcia, the IBF Junior Lightweight Champion. What a beating Molina is taking. He, he's saying here, he's hitting you with the right hand. Throw a left over the right. He's, the guy is hitting you with every right hand he throws. Throw your left over the right. Don't get so careless. What are you doing? If, if you're tired, suck it up. All right, let's take a look at this. Early in the round is that right hand. Look at that hammering shot that just recoils back Molina. And then comes a combination. This boy looks like he's headed for a knockout. Garcia's got tremendous power. There's a nice right hand, a left un underneath, and another left, and this right hand in the middle. That really staggered. Look at Molina's legs. They're a little rubbery. Yeah, he did a little dance there. A little tiny indication that the short circuits are going on in his brain. Boy, oh boy, is he taking some kind of shellac. Round six, it seems as though John John Molina has only one gear, and that's Ford. But he is taking some punishment as he pursues Roberto Garcia. And he's still showing a lot of bounce and a lot of energy, a lot of spring in his legs. He's not the big puncher here, but he's still showing a lot of energy. Well, the top half of him may be going away, but the bottom half is still working. He's, but he's got pretty good sized legs. He's, he's pretty strong as far as his legs. So. Yeah, we mentioned that at the uh, outset. That's one of the reasons so difficult to uh, cut him down. Yes, fellas, with those big legs, we kind of tend to stand here a lot and take meetings. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Bobby Chez would know. Oh, yeah. And Garcia with the jab. Going back to some boxing technique here. Garcia so, switched to southpaw right now. Yeah, he has. That's something new. Trying to confuse Molina a little more as if he doesn't have the upper hand already. As if it wasn't bad news enough. I don't agree with that. I never agree with a guy that's winning a fight doing great one way change. What for? He's doing the whole, great. The whole break. Easy. Stick it easy. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with that move either, and we'll see. Maybe he's uh, got something we're not aware of, but I like him much better better as an orthodox fighter. He's still fighting southpaw now. Is, is he stepping over the line here? Now he switches back to right hand. Conventional. Takes in with a left hook to the body of Molina. And to the head. I mean, you know, when he throws, it just seems to be connected with the next punch. It just that's what a good combination is, a series of punches. Pace has slowed a little bit. Molina throwing a few more, but not being all that effective. Nor strong. Punches nothing. Southpaw again. Maybe he's hurt the right hand. You know a little something about that, too. Nice job by Chuck Bodak in that corner of Garcia. 
Go on, keep it up. I cannot imagine why he switches around. Not nearly as an effective round for Garcia. There he is again. Southpaw. Garcia. Getting a few of those left hooks into the uh, midsection. Good left hook to the jaw of Molina. Molina snaps his head back and comes forward. Nice counter overhand left. Not doing bad from the southpaw side right now. Straight right hand by Molina. Countering left hook by uh, Garcia. And look at this combination. Left uppercut Garcia. right hook as a southpaw. Beautiful. Now he's sort of confusing Mr. Molina. Molina doesn't know where he is. He's getting turned every which way. He's getting hit by from every side. Right every hook. time. Every time. Every time Garcia gives him an angle, he can throw two or three punches from there and move on. Boy, what a, what a workman like job of chopping up a fighter. This is a clinic by Garcia, particularly with the left hooks. Don't be in a hurry. There's no knockout. Don't worry about it. It's just as good to, to win by decision. Don't worry about it. Now let's take a look at a man who is not thinking about a decision, but is thinking. Oh, look at the shot. To, to the uh, jaw of Molina and how his head curls around and back comes Garcia. No mercy. One more look as a southpaw is using that jab as a feeler. So there's a nice left uppercut and a right hook. And I'll tell you what, as a southpaw, he still has the same power. I still like him better as an orthodox fighter, but very effective in that, in that sequence as a southpaw. I'm again, a, a long and storied career for uh, the challenger, John John Molina. And there was some of the finest lightweights of his generation. De La Hoya, Mosley, Tony Lopez, uh, no real major names on the record of Garcia, and it may be about time for a unification fight if he holds on here tonight. Still coming out as a southpaw, he's maintaining a southpaw stance. They didn't tell him anything in the corner about his left hand. They didn't even say it. The TiVo online scoring at the halfway mark, Garcia in command. We all concur. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never agreed with this Five many people this often. <laughs> about <my> anything. <laughs> about anything. So at the halfway mark, Molina continues to come forward, but Garcia continues to be able to, to spin him around with his ring generalship. Nice body shot by Molina a minute ago, and Garcia has flipped back to the orthodox stance. And castigated him for that shot because he gave some big shot in return. Oh, look straight at right hand by Garcia, right on the face. Well, Molina's going to get set some kind of record for toughness here. And that's as Jake Lamato is any guy takes such clean shots from a heavy puncher. Ray, you didn't get me down. The words of Jake Lamato as he lost four out of five. Oh, 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 oh. You guys feel that uh, whiff of air and off that missed yeah. left hook? And cool air, too. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Oh, oh that wasn't a miss. Oh. What a right hand by Garcia, followed up by the left, and Molina just stands in there. He looks a little on. bit of trouble. Looked like a little bit of trouble there. Inviting Garcia in for more. You know, if you'd have watched that sequence again, I hope we can get it for slow motion. Garcia drops his right foot out, shifts his leverage, and fires a beautiful roundhouse right that hits Molina. And I'll tell you, I don't know what kept him up. Well, as mentioned before, Molina keeps his left hand down awfully low, and Garcia's taking advantage. What he's doing good is giving him different angles and punching off the angles. When you can move around and then shoot a punch off moving around, that's when you catch a guy and those are hard. The left hook festival by Roberto Garcia. The right ain't too bad either. But he goes for the knockout with the left hook. That's his uh, M.O. I'm surprised this corner already at this point says, don't try to knock him out. This is just as pretty as a knockout. Well, he's right in the middle of the fight. He's killing a guy. I don't know why you wouldn't say, listen, finish him off. Let's get out of here. Let's go home. Let's Man. see the, the next fight. And make it 32-0. He's 31-0 with 24 knockouts. This is second title defense, Garcia. Molina 45-5 with 30 knockouts. 11-4 in world title fight. Oh. 
bien, bien, mejorate, mejorate un bien. Vamos. We're watch Garcia. He drops his right foot out, pivots back, and then fires that right hand around. And you watch him catch John John Molina so clean. He steps that foot out. There it is. And the hip swings right. It's beautiful. And he gets him a little staggered. You see the legs out. And he follows it up. You'll see some more punches inside. Ending with a good left hook. But you see how he shifts his legs, gets his weight behind him, and turns into some terrific punches. Beautiful shot. That, that's what you call a pretty combination of punches. He says, throw more left hook to, they're hurting him, but don't take so many punches. That's a nice instruction. What can you say? What can you say to this guy? As we enter round eight, round seven, another solid one for the undefeated Garcia. And a painful one for the former two-time world champ, John John Molina. How about Garcia versus undefeated WBC 130-pound champ Floyd Mayweather? Oh, boy. That was a dream fight. I'll tell you, that's the type of fight you would, you'd pay good money to see. That's a dream fight. Terrific speed, terrific power, good, solid chins, great ability. Mayweather also a terrific talent. Well, he can move up. Fight Mosley, he can move down, find a guy named Prince Nassim Hamed, but you got to get online for a fight with the Prince these days. Or he could pay attention to this fight and fight five more rounds and win before he starts counting on who the heck he's going to fight. Because this ain't over. You got your John John Molina in front of you, and he seems to be inhuman in taking punches. He has been a human wall here in this particular fight. Round eight with about a minute gone by. But uh, Garcia just continues to, to pepper away. To wail away at the wall, making it a wailing wall. If you look at Molina's face, it's not that bruised up. You don't see that much in the way of damage. Swelling, cuts, bruises. You really don't see it. And once again, Garcia is a southpaw. Oh, he stepped on his foot. And that's a southpaw. That's a southpaw. That's, that's what he gets for being southpaw. Yeah, that was Molina who uh, stepped on the foot of uh, Garcia who went stumbling into the ropes. I sure wish somebody in the corner would, would explain why in the world he's going left hand when well, he's doing so beautifully. Whoever he turns, it's a member of the family. He's got Eduardo, his father, and Danny, his brother, in the corner there, a family affair. Here's a straight left uh, jab, nicely done by Molina, getting between the gloves of uh, Garcia, but this is a pop. Once again, back to righty. He seems more comfortable as a righty. He's done more damage as a righty. It really doesn't make too much sense to me to switch over to southpaw. No, it just made it made Molina brave here. Here comes Molina, looking like you know, like he found a little gas from someplace. Molina bouncing around on the balls of his feet. Nice left hook to the body by Molina, laying it squarely in the solar plexus. Garcia, but no follow. One and done for the Puerto Rican, John John Molina. And Molina trying to go to the body. That one an arm block by Molina. Oh, another beautiful right hand. Whoa. Straight right, right on the uh, nose by Garcia, literally. My neck is starting to hurt just watching this. I mean, his, his head spins around. I mean, it's incredible to take that. Teddy, terrific shot, Freddy. A pretty sidestep move there by Roberto Garcia. Finishing up with a left hook to a straight right. Another left hook to the face by Garcia. You know, his punches are so hard, much like... I'll tell you, it's, it's incredible. Let's go over to Bill Boggs, Bill. Here on the first row ringside watching the action, one of the towering figures of the 20th century, the greatest Muhammad Ali, the man who went to the mountain against Sonny Liston, George Foreman, Leon Spinks to become the first man ever to win the World Heavyweight Championship three times, the greatest Muhammad Ali taking a rest between rounds, just like the fighters, sensing that the action is about ready to begin and coming back. Hello to Muhammad Ali, the greatest. He is here in support of Mike Tyson, waiting just like the rest of us are for Tyson to enter the ring. There is the greatest Muhammad Ali. Eyes brightening as the crowd sees him. The man who has always received the cheers, the greatest Muhammad Ali. Back to you, Steve.
when Tyson and Botha weighed in on Thursday. The biggest hand of the day went to Muhammad Ali as he came slowly down the aisle up to the stage and gave Tyson a kiss. Oh, he, he always gets the biggest hand, doesn't he? That's the way it'll be until, until the end. Had a prepared statement in support of uh, Mike Tyson. Tyson Botha coming up after this one. Round 9, 240 left. Now, much like we saw in the fight with Vargas and Tacky, Tacky threw a lot of pity pat punches, not even that many to be real effective, but the big power that Vargas had, same as the effects here by Garcia, just winning the fight. Yeah, and he, he is at, uh, right at that uh, mathematical point. He's only got four rounds left, and I don't think he can uh, catch up. It's not looking good. Garcia has been down on two occasions versus Derek Gaynor three years ago. Came back to win. Down to the second, as mentioned, his last fight against Ramon Ledon off a solid straight left, and he came back to win with a fifth round. That was game. a really clean, crisp knockdown, Steven. He got up and he showed what he was made of. I'll tell you, what a great knockdown that was. Here comes Molina with a couple of shots, combinations to the head, but doing not much damage. That was three straight right hands to the head. And, and it encouraged him to, to come on. I, I'm, I, uh, Molina's won the first half of this round. Believe me, Garcia stopped fighting. Here he comes Molina twice again. In the head. And then and the third sort of made him blink. And now he's starting to fight. It doesn't seem to be having all that much effect on Garcia. But the Molina is, continues to be busy scoring more than he had been. There's a beautiful left hook again. You know what I was just going to say is Garcia always unloads with two or three big shots just to remind Molina not to get too brave. And he hadn't done it for quite a while. Molina winning this round right now. That last one made Molina wince. Let's see if Garcia can come back and score and take this round away. Well, you got a whole minute. A whole minute is a lot of fighting. There's a straight right hand. It's a good start. There's another right hook. There's another one. That one was blocked, though, by Molina. A lot of head movement by Molina, but he's getting tagged. Regardless, left hook there, a grazing blow by Molina, by Garcia. Now nice, a right right hook. By, nice right hand by Molina as they heat up, but he just doesn't have the power to hurt Garcia. Garcia lands again with a left hook to the head. By the time you got it, that out of your mouth, the guy had gotten hit three or four counter punches. I mean, that was that fast. That's part of the problem. And Garcia <laughs> is coming back to take this round. Finishing strong in the final minute of the round now. There's another right hand by Garcia. And these shots are all landing as Molina just refuses to raise that left hand in defense. So Garcia finishing strong is mentioned coming up next. A reminder, Tyson Botha. And uh, a la marvelous Marvin Hagler, the door is closed to Mike Tyson's dressing room. As he gets ready behind closed doors for his latest comeback fight, meeting Francois Botha. It's interesting, while Tyson told me he intended to make fast work of Botha, his trainer Tommy Brooks said he wants Tyson to wear down his uh, opponents methodically working on the jab and movement instead of the quick one punch knockout brooks like uh, many feel tyson is no longer the bully who used to instill fear in opponents we'll we'll see exactly what happens when mike tyson shows up the arena looks filled up here at the mgm grand in anticipation of the main event you don't see many seats here i don't see any empty seats i'm looking all the way around i usually see some upper sections they're all filled the configuration for boxing now is a little bit more than 14,000, and it does look like a capacity crowd. Round 10. It goes to prove you need a name and, and excitement that uh, Tyson brings to bring one of these great evenings to boxing. You know, and earlier in the week they talked about there was only an $8 million gate as opposed to a normal $12 or $13 million gate of Mike Tyson as if it was a failure when no one else can generate that kind of money. Yeah. He has the standard by which to compare everything. The TiVo online scoring, 6-3 Garcia. Yeah. And that left hook by Molina was blocked by Garcia. Got the glove up there. Good defense here by uh, Garcia. In excellent shape. Well, Molina told us he, he trains for 12, not looking for the knockout. He's the type of fighter he says finds faults with his opponent, but can't find too many with Garcia here tonight. He cannot solve Garcia. 
as this fight goes on. He's going to desperately need a knockout to win this fight. John John Molina. Way behind. Well, if John John is to go into retirement following a fight like this, he can he can take with him the satisfaction that nobody knocked him off his feet uh, at the end, and you know because this guy should have knocked him out. He just he just very 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 strong. He told us he's uh, not nearly through yet. He's still got plenty to offer. Said Molina. He had only one fight in '98. You sure, have plenty of toughness left over that. I'll guarantee you. Offensively, though, a different story, especially when he gets in there with somebody the caliber of Roberto Garcia. Even that love tap score by Garcia. But you know what? I think John John could go a few more years. I mean, he, he uh, he's a very good fighter. He just takes a lot of punches. This kid is just better. But there's a, a whole load of people he can fight to beat. A whole load. He's always in the gym training hard. He told us he plans to fight a couple more years. Still bouncing around here in round 10. Molina, he's in unbelievable shape. He is. He's, he, he's doing all the fighting here. Looks like he's ahead. On his bike. He's fresh. He looks more. He looks. The other guy looks weary. He just Garcia can't looks weary. Just can't score. Now he's making Garcia miss with more frequency. He's doing a lot of real nice movement, but not that much scoring. Yeah, he's looking good superficial. He's not putting any hurt on there. Is this a sort of posture? Well, he's winning the round, though. And, and God knows he needs it. He needs all the help he can get. Look at this. Let's see if Garcia can finish with one of his patented left hooks and remind Mr. Molina about it. Now he got a little one in there. Time. Here, take this back to remember me, guys. He said, if you want to follow him, follow him. Don't let him punch you. Start moving around. What are you slowing down for? He wants to counter punch you. Yeah, boy, Garcia looks tired. Two more rounds. Two more rounds. Let's go. Don't follow him. Don't chase him so openly. I mean, keep your guard up. Punch. This fight is this fight is yours. It's for yours. Now let's see here. Six minutes only. Take these six minutes. We got a chance. Six minutes of hell. Double duty for the fight doctor with two Spanish speaking corners. Round 11, the championship rounds. This for the IBF Junior Lightweight title. Roberto Garcia well ahead of the former two-time world champion John John Molina at 33, 10 years the senior. But Molina looking fresh. Molina looking like he's enjoying this right now. And the other guy looking very tired. Not discouraged, just tired. I mean, you know, he's done everything he could. He can't put this guy out. And they have kept that cut nicely under control since round three. Chuck Bodak, the cut man in Garcia's corner. The lolly shuffle there by Molina, half speed. Still to do anything like that, Bobby, after taking a hammering like he's done. He's jumping around, showing a lot of energy. Should actually take some of that energy and well, use it through his fists. Nice athlete, John John Molina. I hope he doesn't retire. I hope he does fight a couple more years. This just happens to be one where he's against the guy that's better than he is. He's just outgunned right now. I have it seven rounds to three after ten. Excellent. And I just I haven't passed the point of uh, no, no return. He can't win a decision. Molina, his first world title, the WBO junior lightweight belt, 89, a decision over terrific fighter Juan Laporte in San Juan. His second world title, IBF, about six months later, avenging an earlier defeat to Tony Lopez in Lopez's hometown of Sacramento, a 10th round TKO. Made one defense, a sixth round TKO over Lupe Suarez, and lost in his third fight with Tony Lopez in 1990. Low, 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 low. Get in that corner. Get in that corner. Okay. You okay? I'm all right. All right, you sure? Ready to go. Okay, get in that corner. Get in that corner. Yeah, Garcia says he's all right. I want to get him. Get those punches up, okay? Yeah. Go. You okay? Go. Mitch Halpern 
the referee Tyson Holyfield won, scheduled to ref the rematch in 97. Tyson's camp protested. Halpern stepped away. Mills Lane got the call. The rest, as they say, is history. Best thing ever happened to Mitch Halpern was he wasn't part of that. Oh, man. And also to Mills Lane, who recently retired as a ref to pursue his burgeoning television career. And I, for one, will miss him. I love that guy. And I think he's just a great uh, personality and good referee. He was a class act, a good gentleman, and he was an excellent referee. He is a judge, and uh, that, that alone you should admire. admire. Under 40 seconds in round 11. That the cut beginning to open up a tad now, a little blood. Off the right eye of Garcia, smacking straight right hand by Garcia. Landed to the face of Molina. Blocked nicely by the left arm of Molina there. But even those shots have to hurt. There's some power behind those shots right off the arms. Nice stiff jab. Garcia's now working a straight jab, followed by the right hand. He's stuffed in a long jab out there. Bump blood also coming from the nose of Garcia. Well, he looks like the beaten guy, but he's well ahead. Molina's cheering like if he was ahead. Yeah. Throwing that fist in the air. Well, they go, they, there's an old wonderful boxing action that says, look like a winner, just in case. Last round, cup, last round. Yes. Okay. Here is a low blow, which was unintentional, obviously, but not, not even that low. It was right, right at the belt line, below the belt line, though. And so didn't yeah, help, yeah, didn't yeah, hurt yeah, anybody, yeah, didn't yeah, help yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah, and Garcia took the run. Ones that are right there, not too bad, but the ones that go real low, they really hurt. You got it, all we need to do is win this round, they said. A bit of whimsy. In Molina's corner. Yeah. Maybe they're confused. Garcia 3-0 and oh in fights that go the distance. His last one was March of 98, the victory over Harold Warren, and Molina 3-up, three 3-down three in fights that go the full 12. The last was the uh, loss to Oscar De La Hoya in February 95, four years ago. This for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship. All Garcia has to do here Presumably is stay away. Break, 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 don't push, don't push. He's got it. I find it odd that Molina's corner and so all he has to do is win this round. Incredible sometimes. Look out. Molina putting Garcia down with a straight right. Garcia with a flash knockdown. This is just like last fight. Did he just have something like this? Wild. Hey, you okay? That nah, looked like a legit knockdown. It but was. Can't it, believe it. It was a balance shot, but a punch on the balance. That's the third time he's gone down in his career. Roberto Garcia, well ahead on the cards, yet he is floored by Molina here in the final round. So the best he can do here is fight like heck to win the round and hope to end up with an even round. Yeah. And what we just say, best thing for him to do is stay away. He didn't listen. Well, if he'd have been home, he could have listened to you. Okay. Go on, go quick. Even if Garcia would come back and win the whole rest of the round, it would be 980. Don't lose by a point. If if the scoring is right, Bobby. If if if. There's a whole lot of ifs. Yeah, because you know once once he went down, if he, if his last three or four rounds were been given to him because he was doing pretty good, Molina, then the ref, then the scoring is going to be complicated. It ain't going to be so easy. I got him so far. Look at his eyes completely closed as uh, Garcia. It's as if you want to say, what did that happen? Chuck Giampa of Las Vegas, Ruben Garcia of Texas, Steve Weisfeld of New Jersey, the three judges. Garcia down 42 seconds into round 12. The uh, only knockdown of the fight, 50 seconds remaining. And you have to wonder what Garcia is thinking. Why is he standing in there on the inside and slugging away with Molina? It's almost a repeat of the uh, Vargas Tacky fight. Vargas goes down late with a balance shot from Tacky, although he had one enough rounds. I think the same thing lies here. Oh. She is way ahead. Unless for some reason in his mind he thinks he's not. 
Well, he's the one that looks like he's taking a beating. Molina looks nice and clean and fresh. And he's hammering Garcia. Huge finish for the veteran John John Molina. Well, he's giving himself a nice 10-8 round. Oh, a low blow by Garcia. As Molina crumbles to the canvas. Oh, brother, is he in oh, agony. I don't, I don't believe you can win the fight on the floor. Uh, it's four seconds to go. He can, he can take a, a whole minute if he wants. He's well, got four seconds to go. If a fighter is hit below the belt and can't continue within five minutes, he loses. So he's got to get up within five, or else he automatically loses. He's up, but not well. Look at me, though. Look at me. Look at me. You okay? Yeah, okay, get in that corner, get in that corner. That's a low blow, that's your first one. Right, keep it up, I already did Okay. Yeah, you all right? Okay, go! And we continue on, the final seconds of the final round, and that's it. And then Molina, they clashed heads right at the right at the end there, and oh my goodness, Molina collapses off the ropes, and he was caught by one of his corner men at the last second. They're asking for the chair. He's very woozy. Can't keep him. He can't keep his feet. They got to get the chair up there. There's such a crowd up there, Ferdy. They can't sneak the chair through. He did it on purpose. Now they finally get it through the ropes. Beautiful work, what a dramatic, compelling ending here, this fight. After Garcia seemed to be well ahead, he gets decked by this man. And now the... Uh, you know, it's kind of ironic, the warnings from Mitch Halperin were to Molina throughout the fight. One more low blow, one more low, you know. And now, all of a sudden, one big low blow by the champion Garcia. And then they seem to clash heads right at the bell. Yeah, something happened to, to Molina. And he went crumbling. And he was caught just before he hit the ground, and now he's up, he's okay. Even giving him a 10-8 round, which I did, he still loses the fight. Uh, Molina, I have an 115, 112, what do you got, Bob? Pretty much the same thing. Well, how about this? Our fans voting in on our TiVo online scoring poll gave Molina the last four rounds. If he gets the last four rounds and a 10-8 round, he still loses the fight, but it's much closer. And with Las Vegas judges, who knows? Well, I don't know. After nine rounds, they had it 6-3. Well, it could be uh, a split decision in favor of uh, Garcia. I still think a unanimous decision. Boy, so All right, a lot of action. Let's take. Let, let, let's see if we can't see the, the knockdown. That would be interesting. Let's see what happens with the knockdown. A left, a right. Over the chain, another left, another right behind the air. Well, it's four punches, and he went down. That's right. That's okay. That is a knockdown. No it was. It was a legitimate it. knockdown. No, no question. question about it. Now, Bob, the blow, blow. You take. Here comes one. retaliation south of the border. A big shot that Garcia winds up with a hook and just fires it in there, and bang. See, we that can't. is a clear and clean low blow. But, but and all, and it is I, a clear. But, we, but he hadn't yeah. done it all day long. That was the only one the whole fight. Molina was warned three or four times. And Molina was never doing it on purpose. Well, l l l let's see what happened at the end of the fight. This, like, we couldn't see, except he followed them into the rings. Let's watch their heads. Now, watch their heads. Bang. D that's just as much Molina's fault as it was Garcia's. Maybe more so. He's bouncing off the ropes and coming back. They both just were, you know, coming in. Slingshot. It was, it was a slingshot. Nobody's fault. That's uh, toss the coin. And we have to throw in the possibility Whoa. of a draw in oh, this fight. We but can throw I, any which way. I still think that this guy pulled it out. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's find out as we hear from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the MGM Grand, we have a unanimous decision as all three judges agree and score the bout exactly the same, 115 to 112, all three in favor of the winner, and still the IBF Junior Lightweight World Champion, Roberto Grandpa Garcia. Well, Ferdy, I, I believe you hit it right on the head. 115, 112. Yeah, that's how we had it, but, you know, we, we're a little more experienced in this sort of thing. Some things are a little less obvious to people at home. And the audience, they could just be partial by 
where they're born. Roberto Garcia remains undefeated, retains the IBF junior lightweight title. His second defense improves to 32 and 0 as youth is served. So coming up next, Mike Tyson still behind closed doors. Somebody taking a little peek in there as he gets ready.